Good morning, YTPC. Philly Piper Mike here. It is Monday, <clears throat> September 27th. <coughs> Excuse me, 57 degrees, going up to 81. Another beautiful fall morning. Today I'm smoking my Radice, uh, I believe what is called technically a Toto, um, or a Shape 55-isk type of uh, pipe, a little stubby, stubby Shape 55, very chinny, which is why it's, uh, according to my buddy Pascal, um, there was a very famous Italian actor back in the day um, named Toto, very uh, pronounced chin. Kind of like the Jay Leno of um, Italian actors back, back. Then. I think it was in like the maybe the 40s or 50s, maybe even 30s. I forget. Um, so they affectionately Luigi or uh, yeah, my, Luigi. I think it's Luigi. Yeah. Um, they affectionately affectionately called it a Toto after resemblance to him. I got this pipe from my uh, good buddy Steve Oster. I, I love it. And then my buddy Daniel. Daniel's got one. Very similar. This is like his type of pipe. Short, stubby. I wonder why he loves such short, stubby things. One can only, only imagine why. Anyway, on... Uh, and I'm smoking in it... Um, Kamoy's cast number five bullet rye, um, which I uh, I don't even remember buying. Honestly, I think I bought it at like a B, uh, my local B and M, um, just because I was buying the Kamoy's. I was like, oh, I like bourbon. I like bullet rye whiskey. So I try it. Um, I don't remember ever even smoking it to be honest with you. So this is technically classified as an aromatic. Um, it's like a Virginia Burley Cavendish uh, with bullet rye topping, casing, flavoring. Um, it's not bad. I mean, at least the first uh, few puffs of the bowl are pretty good. I don't know if that flavor will stay the whole way down, but... Um, I don't hate it. It's pretty tasty, actually. Um, I, I looked it up on tobacco reviews just to see the components of it. Because I don't have the tin anymore. <coughs> and um, it only had like a handful of reviews. And I think a couple of them are fairly negative. But, um... Not bad. It's well blended. It's not a. Uh, it's not overly goopy or wet. For technically, I mean, I, I if I had I opened the tin when I opened the jar, I wouldn't have, until I looked it up. I didn't think it was an aromatic. I thought it was just like a. Um. Almost looks like an English mixture. Almost. It's a ribbon cut. You know, it's got the. Cavendish, thank you. But it's pretty good, pretty tasty. And I'm not a huge like whiskey, bourbon flavor type of guy. Um, just because most of them are heavily doused to aromatics, which I'm not really a fan of. But, um, this is good. So I hope everybody had a good weekend. I didn't do much this weekend. I kind of just laid low. It was my, uh, 
youngest daughter's birthday yesterday. We had a nice little, spent the day with her, um, which was nice. Saturday, I, uh, I was going to go and shoot my bow, and, but the wife wasn't feeling great. I let her sleep in, so I uh, didn't get an opportunity to go do that. So maybe this week we'll do that. We're getting close. Uh, I haven't checked my subscriber update numbers, but I know I had a new couple, few new subscribers. So we got to be close to that 490 mark. So. If you're watching this and you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button, and then we'll, uh, I'm going to do my 500 subscriber giveaway. I'm going to get that rolling. We had a, uh, we had a nice, uh, virtual pipe club meeting, uh, this weekend. We had Scotty Pearsall, uh, on, <clears throat> who is, uh, pretty well known for her pencil shanks what a character she is man she's uh she's awesome she's just like straight shooter speaks her mind uh she uh she's one of the guys man she's awesome she's a uh, she's the type of type of person you would just sit at a bar and just you could bullshit with her for hours she was super cool super funny pretty cool how she started making pipes she had made one for her husband as like a I think an anniversary or birthday present or something and I was like oh, I like that and then it just started from there I always find it, it fascinating you know the the people that that didn't have you know a father who was a pipe carver or who kind of were born into the business how they um how they they find pipe making especially as a career how they first got into it. Really cool. But, um, yeah, Virtual Bike Club is just such a good time. You know, if there's any of you guys that watch on, just watch on YouTube, um, or Facebook or whatever, you know, the, 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 whatever way they stream, it's really cool, you know, if you just hop on the Zoom, um, it's just cool to be getting, getting to interact, you know, not, not only with, all, you know, all my fellow members, but also, you know, had good conversations, I was able to ask Shane Ireland questions, and, you know, the carvers that come on, um, it's just cool to be able to have, you know, in-person, like in-person, virtual in-person interactions, and, you know, just sit there and see what everybody's smoking and, you know, what you're smoking, tell them what you're smoking and all that good stuff. Good time. I enjoy it. It's always, like, I've been doing it for, you know, more than a year now, almost every Saturday for a couple hours, you know. I haven't missed many, but it's it's always weird when there there isn't a meeting. I'm always like, oh, what am I gonna do for those two hours that I like set aside every weekend to be able to to enjoy? Uh, and other notes, I also, if any of you guys like, so I basically smoked outside on my porch for the last handful of years. Um, and last winter. It was a cold winter. I mean, I had heaters, little space heaters and stuff, but I froze my ass off. And I wasn't really looking forward to to freezing my ass off this winter. So I had the the car, the porch recarpeted one day about a month ago, and I didn't have anywhere to, to go. I usually always, after work, I smoke my pipe, and they came right when I got off work. So I ended up sitting down in the basement. I have, like, a bar, like, finished basement. <clears throat> and never really used. Um, 
And I was like, man, it'd be great to be able to smoke down here, you know, but I didn't want the house to smell like smoke, and I have kids and all that stuff. Yeah, they don't go down the basement, really, but... Um, so I bought one of those uh, rabbit air purifiers, and um, I've really been impressed with how well it works. It's got an auto function, so it's kind of always on, and um, as soon as you start smoking a pipe, once it picks up the smoke, it kicks into high and just really just eliminates the smoke and the smell and odor. And um, it, uh, you know, I'll go down there a half, hour, a half hour after I smoke or an hour and it doesn't smell like it. I've never, never pipe smoke down there. It's really, really nice. So I actually have to get back to smoking outside while it's still nice weather just because I've been so, I got used to being down there. It's nice that I, I need to go back outside. <laughs> and just save that for when it's like really cold or rainy or windy. But it's not optimal uh, smoking weather. Which will be coming soon because it's near the end of September, so you got another probably month and a half, two months until it gets like bitterly cold. There's times I would like, I would come in from outside, sitting out there for a couple hours in the morning with like literally my toes just like frozen solid, my hands like numb, I could barely feel my hands, nose running, just like freezing, bundled up. But I had like. I bought a bunch of like super heavy like sweatshirts and sweatpants, fleece lined sweatpants and anything I could to keep myself warm out there, but when it's, you know, 10, 15 degrees, it's kind of hard, especially if you sit out there for a few hours like I did. Anyway, but yeah, if you're looking for a, you know, a home, um, air purifier and, and I know a few people in the community that have them and then I also um, one of my local the local B&M that I had he had a cigar lounge or has a cigar lounge and that was the only thing he had in his cigar lounge was that one that one uh, <clears throat> one rabbit air and he like swore by it so they're, yeah, they're not cheap I mean the one that I got was I think it's expensive it's not cheap I won't mention prices because apparently uh, somebody that watches the videos says that I I, uh, I spend too much on pipes and that I flaunt I flaunt um, or I brag or I flaunt pricing um, which couldn't be further from the truth I had, uh, I had talked about the Caminetto pipe pricing because it was 60% off and I was like amazed that you know a $400 pipe was under 200 bucks and uh, and then I think I had said the only, the other time that I talked about pricing was when I sold a couple of my Radiches and I believe and I think I bought my bought my Costello and I was like you know I sold two of my Radiches and got a Costello for basically the same price something like that um, but I just think it's funny it's always it's always one guy who's saying how he you know he didn't uh, spend more than ninety six dollars on a pipe and. That's too much money to spend on pipes. And I said, hey, I spend what I'm comfortable with. Um, you know, people spend way more than, than what I spend on pipes. I used to spend more than I what I spend on pipes now. You know, car, high-end carvers, I mean, you could get a former pipe that's three grand. There's a Mandela pipe that's like 10 grand. It's crazy. But I said, hey, you know, I have, I have $5 cobs that I love too. You know, I don't buy a pipe because of the price. <clears throat> There's pipes that I haven't bought because of price, because I feel like they're it's too expensive. But to each their own, man. You know, I um, I would never tell somebody they spend too much on pipes, or you know, that I that they buy high end pipes just to brag or whatever. It's kind of kind of shallow. But um, yeah, the rabbit air it's expensive, but it's an investment too, you know, to me, um, spending the money to have that, to be able to enjoy a pipe inside this winter is worth it because you can't put a price on comfort. That's for sure.
but anyway guys that's all I really got for you um, this is pretty good I mean it's lost a little bit of the of the the bourbon flavor that it had at the top um, but it's still it's still quality it's quality tobacco I mean I wouldn't expect anything else from Kamoy's um, it's definitely quality I mean it's not something that I would buy again and I'll probably have the jar for quite a while but if you like you know whiskey flavored blends um, I would say this is this is pretty good this is definitely better than like Borkham Riff or anything like that way way better quality that doesn't again it doesn't really look or feel or taste like an aromatic but anyway guys you guys have a great week great start to your week I hope everybody's doing well out there we'll see you guys tomorrow and remember the left lane is for passing see you guys